Hey guys, it's Hink here. I have a pretty important video today that affects like literally millions of men that are going through hair loss. So I've made a prior video about like hair loss and enlargement. And you, if you guys are interested, you can watch it. But I do have some corrections that I want to make because I've come across some new data and it's important to bring this data to light. So specifically what we're going to be talking about today is finasteride. So finasteride, it's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, which basically prevents the conversion of testosterone to DHT. DHT is the component that leads to basically loss of hair. I actually started my enlargement journey the same time I started my actual hair loss journey. And it was funny because my girl would swear up and down that finasteride was making my D bigger, even though I knew that, you know, obviously I was doing PE. But that's neither here nor there for this video. For this video, guys, I've come across some important data that whether you're on finasteride or not, it can actually make a big difference as far as penile health, and I think everybody can learn from it. So we're going to get into it today. So guys, before I get into it, number one, hate merch is live now, guys. All right, <laughs> get you something. This was from a live stream for those that that weren't paying attention to it, but Hink 2024. So I know it's the political season. So, you know, choose your candidate wisely. If you're interested in the merchandise, obviously the link is in the description below, guys. So the first thing that we need to look at when it comes to finasteride is actual changes to the tunica. I think that this is the most important paper. So what this paper did was they looked at three groups of rat. One that was a control, one that was castrated, meaning their testicles were removed, and then one that was treated with finasteride. And they actually looked under ultrasound at the changes to the tunica. Guys, the tunica albuginea is the thick layer of like fibrous layer that surrounds the actual chambers of the penis that's responsible for the penile rigidity, responsible for an erection. And I'm gonna read some quotes here. So what they found in the group that was treated with finasteride, which is this group C, is that the tunica albuginea was mainly composed of thick and irregularly arranged collagenous fibers. So already we can see that there is an abnormal change to the tunica. And guys, one of the most important markers of fibrosis is when you have the smooth muscle of the penis that actually changes into collagen. And what they found in this paper is this. In groups B and C, meaning the castrated group and the group that was treated with finasteride, there was diminished and disappeared smooth muscle fibers were replaced and irregularly arranged in collagenous fibers. That is literally the process of fibrosis, guys. So furthermore, depletion of the elastic fibers and replacement of the fibrosis was also noted in the intact racks treated with finasteride, although the thickness of the tunica did not differentiate. So guys, you can see changes in the tunica albuginea that are similar and the early basically markers of fibrosis in the penis just with treatment of finasteride alone. That is a big freaking deal, guys. And that is something that any guy that is going through any kind of enlargement process or honestly just hair loss reversal in general needs to be aware of. If you're not careful, especially if you're not supplementing appropriately or taking the right medications to help fend off fibrosis, obviously guys like our safeguard formula literally fights fibrosis, you could be doing major disservice to your D and putting your D health in risk. What's essentially as important as the actual fibrotic changes to the tunica? Well, of course, your endothelium. So does finasteride affect the endothelium? Well, you bet it does. So guys, in this study here, they had rats that were treated with finasteride. And what they found, now this was looking at the actual blood vessels in rats, but they found that the endothelial surfaces were appeared crimpled. Not sure exactly what that crimpled. Maybe that means like crinkled up, rough, adhesive, and ruptured, and it had a high rates of destruction of the vascular endothelium, guys. Literally, we have evidence here showing that finasteride also damaged the endothelium. Guys, what about erectile dysfunction? Well, it's no secret that finasteride, especially when you're on it, can cause sexual dysfunction. It's one of the main side effects of it. What they found in this paper which is literally titled The Adverse Sexual Effects of Treatment with Finasteride or Tutasteride for Male Androgenic Alopecia, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. So they found that in particular, the risk of erectile dysfunction was nearly twofold with finasteride one milligram per day, which was consistent of the results of basically prior studies. So we have clear evidence that it's going to cause erectile dysfunction. What about libido, guys? In this same paper, they found that the use of finasteride for male alopecia had increased risk of adverse sexual side effects. In particular, the risk of decreased libido was significantly increased. Let's just take a break and recap, guys. So it can literally cause fibrotic changes to the tunica albuginea. It can cause replacement of the smooth muscle with collagen, the harmful collagen, not the like helpful collagen that some people think collagen can be. It can damage the vascular endothelium, literally the blood vessels and the cells lining the blood vessels rather. It can lead to erectile dysfunction and lead to libido changes. And one thing that always comes up is, and I don't understand how this is so controversial. Well, no, that's not true. I do understand, but it's called post-finasteride syndrome. And I'm sure there's going to be 
I don't want to call him a jerk off in the comments, but some ill-informed person that is going to say post finasteride syndrome is not a real thing. Now, the reason I don't want to call names is because I believe in my initial hair loss video, I say that it's not really a real thing. Guys, like the data is limited and that's why it's hard to point to one paper that says this definitively proves that post finasteride syndrome is real. But I actually think I was wrong in that assessment, guys. Post finasteride syndrome, I think, is very real. And I'm going to present to you some of the data that suggests that it is real. If you don't think it's real, guys, like it's fine. I do think certain guys are more susceptible, especially when they have baseline problems with their underlying testosterone, especially the testosterone and the estrogen ratios. But there's no doubt that there can be long-term changes that are experienced when we look at finasteride. Specifically, this paper here, Immunohistochemical Evaluation of Androgen Receptor and Nerve Structure Density in the Human Prepus and from Patients with Persistent Sexual Side Effects After Finasteride Use for Androgenic Alopecia. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? What that means is they basically took samples from the penile tissue of guys that have long-term persistent sexual side effects after stopping finasteride that used it to treat male pattern baldness. And what they found is that there were significant reductions in the androgen receptor levels that were implicated in the long-term use of finasteride. Now, I think importantly in this paper, they did not see specifically changes to the nerve structure which is very reassuring considering that, guys, I'm still on finasteride. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in just a second. But this is an important quote here, guys. For all you people who think that post-finasteride syndrome is not a real thing, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go hot take here and I'm not going to like lose my shit. But like, I'm just, I'm so tired of like stupid people leaving stupid comments because they are not appropriately informed in my videos. And I always say, if you're going to leave a comment, I would appreciate it if you would leave a source, especially if you're going to make an outlandish comment like post finasteride syndrome is not real, then leave a source, leave a PubMed paper showing that it's not real. Anyways, this provides the first evidence of a molecular objective difference between patients with long-term adverse sexual effects after finasteride use versus a drug untreated healthy controls in certain tissues. So this is definitive evidence of long-term side effects of finasteride, aka post-finasteride syndrome. I, once again, I, I'm changing my tune on this. I think post-finasteride syndrome is a real thing. And shouts out to BD because... If you guys haven't checked out his channel, check it out, guys. But he's the one who actually sent me this paper like six months ago, and I'm just getting around to making a video that includes it. And guys, this doesn't really affect enlargement, but it is a significant side effect. Fertility, guys. So here's a paper. Finasteride use in the male infertility population effects on semen and hormone parameters. Here's some quotes, guys. Finasteride, even at low doses, may cause reduced sperm counts in some men. In this population, the count basically counts improved dramatically after you stop but finasteride should be discontinued in subfertile men with oligospermia and used with caution in men who desire fertility, guys. Let's back all the way up. So we know it causes changes that can be consistent with fibrosis. It causes endothelial damage. It causes erectile dysfunction. It causes decreased libido. It can cause permanent changes to your androgen receptors in your penis, and it can cause decreased fertility. So is that hair loss worth it? Just, I'm, I'm posing the question. Now, guys, what can you do to combat the side effects of finasteride? So, guys, I've been on finasteride for, once again, the past basically four years total, but I've been I've been doing it on and off. I kind of cycle on and off because you actually get some prolonged benefits even when you stop taking finasteride, meaning it's still active. So, number one, if you are worried about fibrosis, then, guys, that's literally why I developed our safeguard formula. It literally has clinically proven agents to stop fibrosis from forming. If you're worried about endothelial damage, obviously, guys, I made our Vigor. So our Vigor, it's a nitric oxide boosting formula, clinically proven to reduce any kind of endothelial damage and maximize erectile quality. Similarly, with erectile dysfunction and decreased libido, our Vigor is going to help combat any kind of erectile issues. Our Fortitude helps maximize libido based on, once again, clinically proven agents. And even though there was no like clear evidence of nerve changes or nerve density, changes from finasteride if you want to protect your nerves that's why i made the shield formula guys i do think that's a big reason why i don't have any issues when i'm taking finasteride is because of the supplementation that i'm doing and i basically have been doing since i started doing my hair loss reversal my experience on finasteride well guys i was previously on oral finasteride one milligram per day i personally talked to your doctor guys i think that that's way too much for most men unless you have severe 
androgenic alopecia. I think when I take it orally, which I really don't anymore, I take about a half a milligram every other day or three days a week, just because I know those systemic side effects. And now I am much more attuned to changes in things like erectile function and libido. But when I was taking one milligram a day, it wasn't until I stopped taking it and I came off and it was about literally like 14 days to a month later that I noticed that I was like, oh man, I didn't even have a, re- a morning wood when I was on this. And I did have decreased erectile dysfunction. But well, so I did have decreased erectile function rather. But once again, I was fortunate to not have any long-term side effects. But now I use a topical spray. You know, here's a study here, guys, that basically shows that when you are on a topical spray, you still get systemic absorption, but it tends to be less. And it's more focused on the basically DHT receptors at the hair follicle. I have noticed far less side effects ever since I got a new prescription. And I am not sponsored at all, guys. Maybe I should be, but I just get mine through HIMSS. These things are a dime a dozen, but if you want to get a, a spray, a mix of minoxidil and finasteride, and I spray it, you know, basically four sprays, and I'd still do this basically three days a week, like basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I use the spray with finasteride. And then on the other days, I just use minoxidil topical spray. It's like Kirkland's on Amazon for those here in the U.S. So guys, hair loss affects, I'm not going to lie, guys. The two biggest thing in my confidence has been, number one, making my D a lot bigger, guys. And, you know, many of you guys already know my story. I've increased my size by about an inch and a half in length and an inch in girth, and I have the receipts to prove it. So if you're interested, obviously, guys, my course is in the link description below where I teach you how to actually get bigger based on real science, just like this video, breaking down actual medical journal articles. But getting bigger and actually reversing my hair loss have been game-changing things as far as my confidence as a man. And I would show you my beautiful locks, but you know, I'm not taking this mask off, at least not right now. So that being said, if you are doing any kind of hair loss reversal, you need to be very careful and be very mindful. And I think you need to be very proactive at preventing any of these side effects. And if they do start to happen, talk to your doctor about them, but also you might want to consider basically coming off of it and letting your body recover natural function. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you made it this far. Far Political merch is available now. And guys, if you want to support me, all the links to all of my supplements, all of my products, all of my courses are in the description below. And of course, ways to support my fabulous editor, Callie, are in the description below as well. So remember, guys, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah In his office, no stealth, yeah Pinnacle of that below the belt, yeah Checks and balance, he's managing Working miracles, no damage Got you covered, no panic, can't stay calm In the clinic, no vanishing Yeah, with Dr. Hank, it's the way back